Hi to all those who are watching. My name is Daniel and I will be presenting on my project called Kubu Raja Abdullah, a heritage centre. My site sits along the main street of Jalan Raja Abdullah and the food street of Jalan Raja Muda Musa. It is an amalgamation of five plots of land. Under the Perbadanan Pembangunan Kampung Baru's detailed master plan, this plot is envisioned to be a mixed development under its cultural park zone. The issue that I will be tackling is the decay of history and heritage of Kampung Baru. The Pentas at Pasar Minggu Kampung Baru was one of the earliest Malay commercial area that was officiated by Tunku Abdul Rahman in 1967. It was ordered to close in 2008 to make way for a legacy condominium and is one of the great loss of place to the Kampung Baru residents. The first Pintu Gebang was recorded in 1930 as the starting point of Pasar Minggu in Kampung Baru. In 2018, the Pintu Gebang was renovated by Pembadanan Pembangunan Kampung Baru. Even though the residents were against it, the project still bulldozed on. Next is Bangunan Warisan at Club Sultan Sulaiman. It is one of the oldest prominent club. This Bangunan Warisan was destroyed in a fire and rebuilt in the 1930s. It was then abandoned and demolished to make way for a new building. It was later rebuilt in 2007 but has been a drug addict's hideout and left abandoned again as of late. Prior to Jalan Raja Abdullah, the road was called Hill Road for 70 years. It was named after Abraham Hill, who was the person who largely implemented the Malay agriculture settlement of Kampong Baru. Due to the name change, there must be a significant history that was untold of Raja Abdullah. As I dive deeper into history, I found out more about Raja Abdullah and his role in pioneering tin mining in Selangor. I'll briefly go through the history of Raja Abdullah. You may pause to read the full story. Basically, Sultan Muhammad Shah couldn't repay a debt and this was when Raja Abdullah and his brother Raja Jumaat stepped in as guarantors. To repay the debt, the Sultan granted Klang Valley to Raja Abdullah instead of the rightful heir which was Raja Mahadi. This marked the beginning of the Selangor Civil War. I would like to bring to attention a certain building called Gedong Raja Abdullah that was used as his residence slash warehouse and a fort back in the days. I will further elaborate on this later in my presentation. In the end, the war lasted until 8th November 1873 where the Pang forces under Bandahara Wan Ahmad captured Kuala Selangor with Tengku Kudin and Yap Aloy. And the war largely ended then. This design research aims to propose an architectural reinterpretation of Gedong Raja Abdullah as a heritage centre that provides socio-economic catalyst for Kampung Baru. The objectives are to explore the possibilities of a heritage centre that brings sustainable socio-economic benefits to Kampung Baru, to propose an architectural reinterpretation of Gedung Raja Abdullah, and to identify different innovative methods that can contribute to the experience of a heritage centre. A study on architectural heritage as a socio-economic opportunity found that there are economic benefits from preservation of heritage. This includes influence on the economic well-being of local communities, influences on businesses as well as the tourism sector. The main stakeholder would be Pembadanan Pembangunan Kampung Baru. I break down the building programs into cultural heritage, social and economic. The first one will include spaces such as exhibition galleries, Gordon Raja Abdullah Exhibition, Kampung Baru History, as well as some Augmented Reality Exhibition. Under the social category, there will be spaces such as Auditorium for Heritage Education Talks, Pentas for Live Performances and Exhibition, Outdoor Public Social Spaces, as well as a roof garden to enjoy the unique view of Kuala Lumpur. Under the economic category, there will be spaces such as tin mining workshops, pewter maker space, thematic cafes, gift shop, auditorium rental, as well as exhibition space for other stakeholders involved Padan Warisan Malaysia, Museum Sultan Abu Shah, Jabatan Warisan Malaysia, Ministry of Tourism and Culture of Malaysia, as well as the Royal Selangor Museum. The reason why some buildings in Kampung Baru were left abandoned, relocated or demolished can be connected to this literature review of buildings having use value or age value. This literature review provides three different approaches such as typological approach and technical approach. But the one that I will be using for my design is a strategic approach where the building is designed in the style of Gredung Raja Abdullah. This building, though a bit far off from Kampung Baru, falls into the same state and is left abandoned. It was used to store Raja Abdullah's tin ores before being exported overseas. It was used as a Klang police station for over a hundred years. This building was used as a tin mine museum in 1984 and was closed five years later 
with its exhibits transferred to Sultan Alam Shah Museum. It was initially set to be demolished to build a tennis court or was saved from that. It has been left abandoned up till today. One of the case studies which I have is the Malay Heritage Centre at Kampung Gelam, Singapore. This showcased the importance of having a heritage centre at a heritage site. It is more than just storing history but also educating and showcasing it to the world. Next is the Guangdong Museum at China. This museum has used a metaphorical approach to its design. It is derived after the Chinese lacquer box where this building becomes a place to house objects of treasures. The spaces are carved through the museum box and reveals different layers of transparency between the internal and external rooms. In the case study of Potato Head Studio Resort, OMA designed it around a plaza that is open to the public. They challenged the typical resort typology where the notion of exclusivity is abandoned and made the resort part of the local community. The same can be applied to challenging the typical heritage centre as a museum, but more can be done to make it inviting and beneficial to the community. This brings me to my design development. It started off as a perimeter building that protects Gedong Raja Abdullah and it slowly evolved into a fortress-like building with four corners protecting the interior. The prominent column's element was taken from Gedong Raja Abdullah and showcased externally. I then incorporate the Tangam design as part of the metaphoric architecture approach to design the spaces and circulation of the building. I've chosen to refer to Tangam as it is a traditional Malay jointing that acts as a stronghold for the history and architectural heritage of Kampung Baru. It interlocks the history and heritage towards this unique site. The building is situated at the junction of the main road and the famous food street of Kampung Baru. The newly assigned plot ratio of 1 to 10 by DBKL is insanely high, but we will not be aiming to achieve that as our urban studies outcome goes against it. Other than entering the building from the main junction, there are two paths leading in from Jalan Raja Mahadi and Jalan Raja Abdullah. The main entrance at the junction only caters for pedestrian as we aim to celebrate that in our master plan. Vehicular entrance and drop-off will be from the back. The ground floor consists of tin mining and filter making workshops, a tin mining team cafe, a coffee corner near Jalan Raja Madumusa, as well as a central stage where performances can take place or visitors can rest at. Up to the first floor from the flanking stairs, we arrive at the reception lobby. The circulation is in a clockwise direction and leads through the tin mining exhibits on this floor. There is a gift shop by Royal Selango as a pit stop of this exhibition. There are outdoor spaces for them to display their outdoor pewter collections. Head up to the second floor, this will be the part of the museum where it showcases the history of Raja Abdullah and his involvement in tin mining. The outdoor exhibition will display various tin mining artifacts as well as parts of the tin dredge. Next is the third floor. This level consists of promoting the history of Kampung Baru, which is greatly lacking according to the community. The Surambi extensions highlight certain types of architectural elements of Kampung Baru as the permanent fixtures. There are little pockets of spaces to rest and take in the view of Kampung Baru and Kuala Lumpur city skyline. Up one level, we have a staggered auditorium which allows for exhibition storage space below the empty seats. It can seat 226 people and have entrances from this level or the one above. The spillover spaces of the auditorium can be used as a chilling area or a flexible exhibition space for rent. On the fifth level, we have the pewter maker space. This consists of 35 4 square meter and 10 6 square meter lots for rent. This maker space will focus mainly on pewter making if not crafts related to metal. A small section consists of the polishing, smelting, casting and acid treatment station for making pewter goods. Also, the main auditorium entrances are also located on this floor with sufficient spillover spaces. Finally, we arrive at the roof garden. The design of the individual roofs allows for small pocket spaces to be inserted that are shaded. It is up here where visitors can take in the view of Kampung Baru and Kuala Lumpur city skyline. It might be the only time one would see the whole of Kampung Baru before more and more mega high-rises take over the landscape. I do hope that by sharing more information of the history of Kampung Baru, it may raise awareness to the gradual decay of this beloved urban village and prevent it from further loss. I would like to end my presentation with a quote by Marcus Gavi. He says, A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without its roots. With that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you. Due to the time constraints, not all slides were shown in my presentation. 
therefore do refer to the PDF copy of my slides. And here are the references.